Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how we created a French Bulldog with the Molly's Creature Creator. So we now sell these in our online store for those of you that are interested in purchasing one. So I baked the cake already. I just used a packet mix one in this guys. Um, so yeah, and I've just leveled it off so it's level with the top of the cake mold. Just put a board or something underneath it when you're turning it out of the mold itself. These ones have been a bit overbaked. <laughs> So yours might not need quite so long. Um, this one I think was in for about 45 minutes. And you're just gonna fill in the middle with your buttercream. Mine's a really, really pale shade of green um, as I managed to drop a little bit of food color in, in the bowl when making this. So guys, this is a sped up version of the one we created in a Facebook Live. So we did this in a Facebook Live uh, for people to watch. So you don't have to rush as much as I did with this one. So we push the two halves together with the buttercream sandwiched in the middle. Um, sorry about all the background. That's all my Christmas stuff in the background that I've been doing on the Christmas advent calendar tutorials that we've been running. So we cover the whole thing in buttercream. And we're going to use my dog Bruce for inspiration. So I'm using a flexible smoother now to run over the buttercream. So bending the smoother slightly. And guys, remember, as always, we're going to put links below the video to all the products and items that we use so that you can see exactly what it is that we're using. So once you've smoothed it off, you're going to take some red fondant or sugar paste. It's the same thing. It's called different things in different places. And we're going to wrap it around sort of the body part. Now, we're going to do this so that it's laying on its back with its legs in the air. So I'm going to give the dog a red jumper. And I'm going to cut it off there. And we'll do the same on the other side. And you can put yours in the fridge for a while before adding the fondant so that the buttercream has time to harden because it was done in a Facebook Live. I didn't have time to put it in the fridge in between. So my buttercream is still very soft. So we're going to put a small piece of red in between there. So it just fills in that little gap. And try and blend the scenes out the best you can with your fingers. I couldn't fully get rid of mine, but I wanted to try and texturize it with a, a knitted texture mat anyway. So this disguised it a little bit. You could see them still a bit but because of how we decorate it later it's covered up the seams so don't worry too much okay so i've got some gray fondant that i've mixed and we're just adding like this big oval piece it's fairly flat to sort of the bottom of what will be the face so this is going to go underneath the nose just so it gives the nose area a bit more shape and then we've rolled out some gray now really guys you want to go much thinner than what i did do with the fondant but because again it was a facebook live i was doing it in a bit of a rush so I didn't really spend long enough making it nice and thin. But with it being a shaped cake, if you do go too thin, just be careful that you don't sort of press through and tear the fondant if you do go really thin. So we've cut it off around the bottom edge and then we're just pressing in the shape. So I've used my rolling pin to kind of press above where the nose area is gonna be. And then my fingers and balling tool for sort of the eye area. A little bit in the middle of the forehead that we're gonna press into. Just watch out if you press too hard like I have done, I've thinned the fondant so much that I've gone through to the cake. So just be careful of that. A couple of creases above the nose, a little line in there for the mouth and nose area. And then we want a smaller ball under there for sort of the bottom half of the mouth or its chin. If it's not sticking, just use a bit of water or edible glue between the two pieces. So we're gonna use the dressing tool to draw a line up kind of the side of the mouth so it looks a bit happier, nice big smile. Use the ball in tool to push in those outer edges. It's got a massive head compared to body. So ball in tool, again, a bit deeper this time for where we want those eyes to go. I've gone slightly kind of teardrop shaped for the eye hole, just slightly. And then some little marks in here. I'm gonna put a bit of pink on there. So this is where my dog is a bit pink around his kind of muzzle and chin area. So it's edible food colors that we're using. Don't forget the links will be below the video, guys, if you do want to see what everything is. And then a bit of black just to darken around that nose area as well. And then we've got a disc of pink. Oh, it's not quite a perfect disc. It's just a ball that I've squashed down a little bit. Um, I've put a bit of pink shading around the outer edge. And we're going to try and slip it between the bottom of the mouth and the top of the mouth. I'm going to put two balls of white fondant in those little eye areas that we've made. I'm trying to push them into that teardrop shape and then I'm just using the black dust again but this time mixed with some dipping solution to create a paint so that we can paint into the eyes so nice big sort of curved line and then you want to leave two circles that stay white 
And if you prefer, you could stick this on in fondant. You don't have to paint it on like I have done. I'm going to use a bit of black dust just to put in some little marks, kind of eyebrow area. And then let's add a nose. So it's kind of a rounded triangle-ish shape. Put a little line down the middle. And then slightly to each side, another line. Then we want some more grey fondant and it's going to cover the bottom edge of that cake. So I've still got bits of buttercream kind of squeezed out between the areas that you can see, but we'll, we'll cover that shortly. Trim any extra off from around the bottom edge. So where I want the sort of hips to be, we're going to press in a bit. Do the same on both sides. And a little line there where the leg would kind of crease. So I'm just going to, before we keep going with the arms and legs, I'm going to just add some details to the jumper, just using a snowflake plunger cutter, just some thin white fondant stuck on there. Now I actually end up covering quite a lot of this up, so you don't end up seeing it all in the end. So let's do the edge of the jumper. So we want some more red. We're going to roll it out, a little strip. Let's put some knitting texture on there. So I'm just using a texture mat. Little bit of water where we want it to go and I'm just going to wrap it around the edge of the jumper so it's covering the seam that goes between the jumper and the grey part of the body so it should neaten that up a bit for us and then you can put some little lines in some ribbed lines I think I'll add a little bit of pink to the tummy and of course you can do whatever colour dog you want so for the legs I've taken some more of my grey fondant but this time I've added CMC so CMC or Tylus powder it's um, a firming agent, so you want to mix it in and it just makes your fondant dry a little bit firmer. So we've got like two long teardrop shapes and then we've put two little lines in the fat end for the paws. And we're going to press those onto the body. Now you might find that they take a bit of balancing because they're quite big, quite heavy. It's quite a lot of fondant there. You probably wouldn't want to just eat the arms. So just be careful when placing them on. And we're going to do some more red... This time it's just going to go around the arm. So it's got little sleeves on the jumper. Now I wanted to do a fur trim around the jumper, but I think I just made the dog look like it had a bit of a beard. So I probably, if I was doing it again, I don't think I'd bother adding this white bit. We just try to get a bit of fur texture with some scissors. Um, the scissors are just for my cake projects. They're not actually scissors that I use for nails. So I tried to get that all the way around. Like I say, I don't think it actually needed this, but at the time... I thought, oh yeah, it's going to look nice with some fur on there. And then we're going to do like a bit of a blanket. Although it looks more like a scarf. It's just going to go around the top of the dog so he doesn't look like he's just laying on a plain red board. I've tried to do it striped so we've put some green and red fondant together. Does it like a scarf, doesn't it, rather than a blanket. And then we're just going to drape it around kind of the top of him. Top and around the sides a little bit. There we go. If you've got any offcuts, you can tuck them under there so there's extra pieces kind of sticking out the bottom edge if you want. Now a tail. So my dog has like a little tail that's just a tight little curl. And then for its legs, kind of similar to the front legs, but we're not going to bend them over quite as much. So roll them so they're a little bit thinner at one end than the other. The fatter end will be sort of the foot part. So let's put some little lines in to create its little toes. And I'm just pressing into the cake a little bit so it dips in so that the feet balance better into that bit that's dipped. I'm adding water or you can use edible glue and you're going to push those in place there. Again, they're very heavy guys, so just watch out for these falling. And we want some little paw pads, so I'm use, just using some black fondant to create the little pads for the paws. So I'm only going to put them on the back legs, not the front legs. And it's like a bigger piece. And I'm trying to think what kind of shape to describe it. I'm not sure what kind of shape, almost like an upside down heart-ish. And then some ovals under each toe. If they don't balance, put something under it like some kitchen roll or greaseproof paper just to hold them in place until it's firmed up a bit. So if you leave them under there for a couple of hours, it should be enough that the fondant has started to get a bit firmer. So now he needs some ears. So we're going to go for teardrop shapes again. I've added CMC to this as well as the legs because if not, they're, they're going to be too soft and they're just going to flop off. So in my teardrop, I've kind of pressed in the middle with the rolling pin. And then we're going to have a look at the size of them. I think they don't need to be quite so big. Let's cut a bit off the bottom with a bit of a slope so that it fits against 
the side of the head there like that. And let's put some pink in. You can see I dropped the uh, pink everywhere earlier. And it is horrible stuff to wash off your work surface. And a bit of the black edible dust as well on the ends of the ears. So I'm going to give those five minutes to firm up while we add a bit of writing. So I think just in the scarf, we're going to put Noel. So these are the sweet stamps letters. Again, I'll put links below. Um, I do sell all these products in my in my shop on my website anyway, guys. But I'll put the links below so that you can you can find each thing individually if you want. So we're going to use some green powder mixed with dipping solution. It does look pretty dark when I paint it in. But once it dries, it actually looks the green color that it does look in the pot. And you don't have to paint in these letters. If you've got the little easy pour bottles, you can pour your edible paint into there rather than painting. Okay, so let's stick those ears on. If they don't hold up at first, put a cocktail stick or something under them, sort of piercing it into the cake, just to hold them in place. Again, in a couple of hours time, when these have had a chance to firm up, I'll be able to remove those cocktail sticks from under the ears. So there it is, bit pink on the feet. And that's it, all done. I think guys, if enough of you are interested, then I will do another of these videos over on Facebook. And I'll also shorten it and put it on here. So I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out all my other tutorials on my YouTube channel. Have a lovely Christmas and a happy new year. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.